again. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Percy. So last week we did a tutorial on how to draw joy from inside out. Say that three times fast. Oh gosh. Anyways, <laughs> so I left I left in the like little info box underneath my video and I also said it at the end of my video, who do you want me to draw next from inside out? And I do plan on doing all the emotions. So that way you can either make a huge family portrait and just put them all on the same page like I made in my previous video or you can just draw them separately. But I did want to go ahead and do all the emotions from inside out so I said who do you want to do next and you guys left in the comments below the most I've seen uh, the most comments for is disgust so to avoid last week where I went off the page whoa now pencil calm down um, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my main my main circle right here now disgust has a very small body just like joy very small body and a very abnormally large head but whatever they're supposed to be like the anebas of your brain right the feelings the anebas of your brain so as I'm drawing right now I'm kind to kind of make her head more of like a home plate on a baseball field so as you can see I went ahead and I did the both sides like this where I kind of curved the edges so I have this ginormous circle initially like that but I made it more of like a home plate you know on the baseball field. Now, <laughs> Disgust has a very interesting scowl on her face. I'm not even sure if it's a scowl. I don't know what it is. It's just like, I'm gonna rip your face apart if you don't do what I say. That's the kind of look I'm getting right here on this particular image. Okay, so her eyes are literally going to be on top of her head. So I made this abnormally shaped uh, head for the moment, but at the top, I'm going to go ahead and draw that line where I need, where I know that this is where I generally want to place my eyes. So down the middle, of course, we're going to go ahead and divide it up just a little bit. Her head is kind of turned to the side just a little bit, but anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make this oval shape on top of my line right here. Make sure there's enough space off to the side of the head right here. And then I'm going to come over here, do it again nice oval shape like this La -ta -ta. okay then after that I want to go ahead and just get some things laid out just because it always helps me I don't know about you guys so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just come right in the middle between her eyes literally literally and I'm gonna come right in the middle and make this circle so these eyes will eventually be shaped more like hers and everything but I just wanted to go ahead and get everything lined out so for right now I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly place this for right now right here yes that's her mouth and we'll get to it in a second right now I'm gonna use my little disgust eraser I'm gonna go ahead and clear up some of the guidelines let's go ahead and start with this eye first okay so we initially have the shape of her eye what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come right on top of my eye mark right here I'm gonna come around the edge right here I'm gonna get a little bit smaller and go in just like that so I got like a weird looking, you know, nut sunflower shape all over again. I'm gonna bring this in right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna come on top of right here and make sure that this comes around like that. So after that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump in for right now and I'm just gonna give her her pupil. And it mostly takes up most of her eye, but then again, it really doesn't. So for right now, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna jump over to the other side for right now. And it's basically the same shape where I'm gonna come, I'm gonna go around my eye, go around in the middle, come up, just make it a little bit more shapier, go in, I'm gonna get rid of the little squibbly lines, my sketch lines I just made. I do, this one is a little bit larger just because this, this is more, I don't know why, it's just her face. <laughs> I don't know, but this one's just a little bit more open than this side over here. So I'm going to keep it a little bit rounder and not as slim as the other side of her eye. So I'm just going to leave that a little bit more open. And of course we've got another shut like her eyes, like eyelids kind of like shut just a little bit. I think it's because of her eyebrow is more down this way and the eyebrow is more up. So she has an arched eyebrow going on right here. And then I'm going to jump in the middle once again, right here. I'm gonna give her her pupil, which is like almost like three quarters of a circle, maybe. Yeah, do I measure it? I don't do math. Okay, so I need I leave enough space, and of course her eyebrow is all the way up here, 
and it's hidden behind her bangs, but I'm gonna go ahead and just initially give that eyebrow, which is basically like a little box. And then I'm gonna come over here, and this eyebrow is dropped down just a little bit more. So for her eyebrow, her eyebrow is on fleek. Okay, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna come down, and then it's gonna arch around and down towards her, her actual eyelid. Go ahead, erase this for right now, because I can't, can't see what I'm doing. And the initial shape that I just made it is basically the shape of her eyebrow. It gets really skinny right here. Like I said, her eyebrows on fleek. Mm -hmm. Anyways, <laughs> so after that, let's go ahead and just go ahead and finish the rest of her eyes. Now, Disgust is pretty much known for her awesome eyelashes and everything. So this is interesting. She has a very, on the top lid of her eye, she has a very thick eyelid line. So it's like really thick black eyeliner and then the crazy green eyelashes come out. So I'm going to come over here, make this more thick. Nice and thick. And of course, I want to just go ahead and lightly erase around the bottom because it is a black line underneath her eyes, but it's not as thick as the top line. So we've got our thick eyelids on top and then we have the sprouting green eyelashes. Now, every time I have drawn Disgust, I've drawn Disgust twice so far. This will be the third time I have drawn Disgust. To do her eyelid, her eyelashes, I always save them for last, but before I like to fill it in in color and put little uh, white gel, gel pen little dots all over it. For now, I'm just going to draw one, two, three, four. Now, these are just here, just to let me know that I need to come back and initially round these off and make them the actual length that they are. And then, of course, over here, it's interesting because her actual bangs of her hair is covering this side of her eyelashes. But just to give me my reminder that they're over here, I'm going to do one, two, three, four. Just like that, okay? Now, let's jump back inside of her eyeballs and finish off those eyes. So, I'm just going to come in the middle and make my actual pupil right here. Come back over here. Come right down in the middle again. Make my pupil again. Of course, she has very dark green eyes, so I'm just gonna lightly color this in over here. And then she has a little shine here and a little shine right here in her eyeball. And just make give it a couple more definite lines, just like that. Wonderful, okay. So after I've done her eyes, let's go ahead and fill in the rest of her face and start with her nose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around, I made my circle, and then once again it's kind of like Joy. You really can't tell it's a nose, it looks like a little mountain in the middle of her face. Which is a, the easiest way to draw noses if you ask me. But hers is pointy, so I'm just going to go ahead and give that initial round feeling to it. Then. I'm going to shade it in like that, where it's going to give like a little point. Okay, make that point on top of her nose just to show that it is a point. And then I'm going to come around just like that. So it looks like it has a point, but your shading is going to be your best friend here. Okay, so it looks like a point. Do you see what I did there? Your shading is going to be your best friend in this particular uh, moment. If you're coloring her, then you're going to have to use a little bit of dark green and your light green or mint green because her skin is definitely a mint green. So that, that's going to be your best friend shading the nose in this particular sketch. Okay, now for her lips, I went ahead and I just did a little bit like a little line guideline for her lips. So I'm going to go right down in the corner and that's where the arch of her lips is going to start right here. So I'm going to bring this down right here, come down here, and like that. Okay, like Joy in this image, she has a very, th very thin lip lines, okay? But then again, she is wearing dark pink, pink, I don't know, it's uh, purple, I don't know. But she's wearing the same shade to match her scarf. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit on top of that line, like that, where I gave it a little bit of a curve. Cause she is scowling so we have to give that scowl and this is going to come down just a little bit more i'm going to come underneath here 
And just like that, she kind of looks like Corella Deville lips. There we go. And it's a pink, purple, shaded, I don't know, matches her scarf, lip, lip color, whatever. Next, let's go and do her hair because initially her hair goes or circles her face and of course we have to get those eyelashes in there somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the top of her head, right here. We still need to leave a significant amount of space to show that for her forehead. So I'm gonna start right here above her eyebrow. I'm just gonna go a little bit up and there's the part of my hair right here. So I'm gonna bring this down, down for right now. After that, I'm gonna jump over back to the side, come off to the side, down, keep going down, and start flipping out that direction. Okay, now let's go ahead, shape it a little bit more. I'm gonna jump inside so we have the part of her hair. Now I'm gonna come inward, and I'm gonna start bringing those bangs down. And the bangs initially chop off this whole side of her head, so we don't even see this part. Bring in Miss Disgust Eraser. I'm gonna erase these lines. And of course, you can see I'm erasing my eyelashes. Oh no, but you know, I know that they're still there. Now, I can darken in that, that little eyebrow line. And this is another thing that's interesting. She has a line right here, and a line right here, just to show that wonderful scowl and that those awesome lines that are just circling around our eyebrows all the time when we are just disgusted. Anyways, so I'm gonna jump back inside right here from here just to give that little bit of a cowlick that she has going on in her hair. It kind of reminds me of my bangs when they're all crazy. Okay, so she has a cowlick. So initially the hair is going in this direction, like this, and then it overlaps and turns into those bangs. So we just give it a little bit more choppy chop bangs, and then it goes down into this ginormous mass. And I'm just gonna round this off just a little bit more like that. Very 50s wonderful cut going on here. Okay, this is what I wanna do. This is interesting about disgust. You can literally, from this flip over here, I make this flip, I'm just gonna come on over here and do that. See, now you've basically made the overall shape of her hair. Now, I, what you can do later is, I'm gonna go ahead, draw the rest of her body, and then eventually we just erase this line right there. Before we finish the rest of her hair, I wanna go ahead and finish the rest of her body because, you know, once again, the hair is engulfing her body. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just bring up her face just a little bit and make it a little bit more like to a point, like it's going inward like an hourglass, like that. Go ahead, erase just a little bit. Next, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring down her neck, right in the middle. Just like that, okay? After that, she has a very small neck. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw the top of her actual body. This is her torso. Once again, big head, small body. So for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and just finish off her torso like that. So it looks like a very interesting uh, guitar pick that's not sharpened at all, I don't know. <laughs> so, all right, we have her shoulders are slumping down, but this one's kind of going up. So we've got some shoulder action going up this way and slumping down this way, like that. Next, after that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring down the rest of her body and skirt. Now, short torso, into big, ginormous, awesome dress. Okay, so I'm making this ginormous dress. I brought down this line just for now. I'm gonna kinda go outward like this. I'm gonna come back up to my torso. I'm gonna go under and out like that, just for now, okay? I'm gonna start with this shoulder first because initially, this arm is crossing in front of her body and her other arm is propped up on this arm, okay? So I'm gonna come down like this. I'm gonna go ahead and make the top of her arm like that. And then I make the forearm like that. I'll go ahead, raise some of these guidelines so you can see what I am doing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, shape up her arm just a little bit more, bring that down. Now this part is going to be overlapping this line, and then this line right here is kind of crossing, overlapping on this line. Okay. 
just like that. Ready then. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and you really can't see her hand over here. Ah! Answer to our prayer, so we can't we don't have to draw this hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make the little indention like she's got her fist balled up over here, just like that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to this shoulder, which is coming down, and this part of her arm is overlapping the fist we just drew. Drew, draw, drew, draw. Okay, but then again, we see this part of the arm, but then it starts to go up like this, just like that. You know, typical checking my nails stance, the cool girl stance. Go ahead and erase this. As you can see, what I just did. Now this is interesting. We've got this shoulder coming out this way. Now we have to place her dress just a little bit more to see what we're doing. Now, we're gonna go ahead and give her her shoulder straps. And she has a V-neck to her dress, like that. And then I'm gonna make her chest come out just a little bit, like this. Like that, and I'll go ahead and erase. Just like, okay. Now, for her hand, once again, we kinda get to escape actually drawing a hand for her in this stance, but still, it's still folded up. So, I'm gonna come from underneath this line right here. As you can see, I kinda curved that inward just to give it a little bit more of a shape to her arm. And then it's gonna go, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna draw this circle and a circle on top of it, like that. Now I'm gonna come underneath and curve downward like this, jump on top of that, come downward and into that overall fist again. Now this isn't a really fist where we can see her thumb because her thumb's over here, but we can divide this section up into four, mm, yes, she has four fingers. So one, two, three, four. And she's got it like balled up and you just separate those four sections right there like that. Okay, and let's give a little bit more indention to her palm and bring it down just like that. And I'll bring this down into that. Raise this a little bit. Awesome. Okay, so we have her Let's go ahead and shape up her actual fist down here again so we can see it. So it doesn't look like we chopped off her other hand. Just like that. And I'm gonna come underneath, shape up this arm a little bit more. Give a little bit more point to her elbow. And there we go. So I'm gonna go in and just make her arms a little bit more shaped. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that shoulder hunch right there. Go around, in, and down, just like that. They might be your feelings, but they still have very similar um, body shapes to humans. And bring this in just a little bit like that. Bring this down like that. And I'm going to bring this shoulder a little bit more rounded from down here. Goes around and down into here like that. Awesome. Alright, now let's go ahead and give her that infamous scarf that she wears. Okay. As you can see, one point before we go on to the scarf, as you can see, that line for her hair sure did disappear. So, now I'm going to go just... It's literally just this line right here will be the top of our scarf, like that. We have a little ball to show that it's knotted. And then I'm just gonna come outward like this and make like a little tail here, come underneath, and it is see-through. It is a very sheer fabric. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make another little tail like I did. Just like that, and you can make this a little bit more shaped, but initially, this is her scarf. 
Now when you have very see-through uh, fabric overlapping each other, the main part where they cross over in, in front of each other will be darker. Just like because it's crossing over each other and it's deepening the color. It's kind of like watercolor almost. We have a little bit of her actual skirt coming off to the side, but then again, her foot is all the way out here. Yeah, we have enough paper. Awesome. Okay, so her foot is coming out all the way over here. What I'm going to do is just make this simple for right now. Give it the bottom of her foot. And then I'm just going to go right off to the side, bring down the other side of her, foot, her leg, like that. And of course, we're leading down into her other foot. So let's jump up back to the midsection of her dress that's coming out from the side of her elbow. I'm going to jump right down from right here and here's one section of the dress. So we have a fold of her dress right here. We have a fold coming over here and then we have a fold that's kind of like completely folded over but it's still coming out over here like that. So I'm going to bring this down right here, curve that up curve this up and curve that up so we initially have the overall shape of the dress and all that's left is you have to shade it and put those awesome flower patterns on we'll put the flower patterns on later for right now let's jump to these legs so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna skinny up this leg just a little bit so we'll bring those lines in closer together as we get closer to her foot and I'm lightly erasing that circle down here because initially, I'm coming down into that circle like that. Next, what I do is I'm going to curve inward like this, come back. Now I'm going to curve this way inward and go back up into that overall shape. So come down. And this is more of a line stuck together, just like that. We got the good heel of her foot, give a little indention into her ankle, and it goes right back into that her leg. So well, let's erase this up just a little bit. Her shoes are pretty darn simple if you ask me. I just, I'm just going to come inward right here like that, and then it goes right up into the back of her actual um, foot. Now, they are a purple, once again, they match her lipstick, her blush, eye, uh, slightly eyeshadow, and scarf. So it'll be the same purple. And I'm just going to go ahead, give a good dark line to indicate that that is uh, her heel of her foot. Make it a little rounder. Okay, so then I'm going to come on top right here and make a legging, like that. I'm going to start from this side over here, come down outward, little rounded here, and then it's going to go up and into this part all over again, just like that, just like that, okay? So her foot is facing this way, so we have a little bit of her foot kind of sticking out just a little, even though we're looking at it straight on, it's sticking out just a little bit. So we want to have this good angle right here, okay? Underneath this part of her foot, I'm going to draw this part, which is, of course is another part of her foot, and it's the heel. So I make this nice and dark and right here. Now to make this easy, all I'm going to do is just chop off that side right there. And there's the pink purple of her shoe. And then make sure my uh, overall leggings are right. And I go ahead, I mean right as in the same length. Just like that. And her leggings, of course, are a dark green, so I'll go ahead and shade that in so we don't get confused what is skin and what is fabric. And I'll color this in because it is a purple shoe. Just like that. There you go. Now, she has a very similar, like, kind of pattern to what Joy had on her dress, but they're weird looking flowers and they were overlapping everywhere. So, I've ever watched SpongeBob, and if you look at the sky in the cartoon, that's what the flowers on her dress look like, like that. And they are literally overlapping each other. They vary in size, but they look like the flowers on SpongeBob. Like that. 
and they're all over her dress. They are a light blue and yellow. That's all over her dress. You could probably do as much as I did right there, or you could keep going with the whole entire dress pattern. But for right now, we really need to finish her hair and her eyelashes. So let's jump back up into nice Missy's hair. She has an interesting cowlick on this side as well. So this part of her hair is overlapping. So what I can do just to show that that overlap, I have a dark spot here and I also have this dark spot right here. So I shade those in and the hair will go up just like that. And then it just kind of wavers down like a waterfall. The length of it will stop right at the tip of her actual scarf. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So this side of her hair is curved inward. Over here, it's starting to flip out. As we come over to this side of her hair, it's flipping out in this direction, like that. There we go. So you can see the general outlook of where the hair is going. Now, her eyelashes. Like I said at the beginning of this tutorial, I like to save her eyelashes for last just because it's always nice to get in there and go over. Now, here is one length. As you can see, I just went up that length and I curved inward like that. Now I'm going to bring this out just a little bit more and then I'm going to curve inward once again like that. Once again, jump inward alongside my eye make it a little bit taller curve inward once again come underneath again and I curve there we go there's my eye one side of her eyelashes now let's come over here now this one is coming out this way I'm gonna go on top curve inward like that go to the next one out curve inward and then I'm gonna go out. Once again, this is my tallest one. Just like that. I curve inward again, making it a nice, like it looks like a very long teardrop coming from her eyelid. And then I'm gonna come underneath. And I have another eyelash like that. Once again, they're crazy green. Kinda remind me of the Grinch. And they've got sparkles all over them. Well guys, there you go. There's disgust from inside out. Um, I really want to say thank you guys for coming and at least searching my uh, in order to like find a video on how to teach disgust. I'm sure there's a lot out there. I have not personally looked myself, but um, if I'm really thank you for coming to find this tutorial disgust and joy that I've done so far. I will get to all the emotions once again. I give you the option. You can put all of the characters together when I'm done with the tutorial or you can draw them separately or you can do both. It's always great for practice and I always suggest that you practice once a day. But I really hope this was helpful. Once again, leave in the comments below which emotion you want to draw next. I know the runner up to discuss was of course sadness. So maybe we'll do sadness next week. It's up to you guys. Or anger or fear or bing bong. We'll get to them. But yeah, leave in the comments below who you want to draw next from Inside Out and I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see y'all later. Bye! Hey.